We praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. We tell of your wonderful deeds. So let's all stand and praise his name and thank him for everything that he has done. I'll pray. Dear Abba Father, thank you so much for all the things that you have done for us and through us. Thank you for always being with us, for protecting us, for guiding us, for forgiving us, for just loving us. And we pray that you would give us the courage and the boldness to speak of your love to others. May we be an extension of your hands and feet to the people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on your screen. My name is Teacher Plum. And I'm Teacher JC. And welcome to Kids Church for Big Kids. And Small Kids. Wait, wait what? Huh? Teacher Maylene, aren't you supposed to be in the Small Kids video? Well, haven't you heard? Small Kids and Big Kids will unite. Oh yeah, I remember now. Wait, whoa. Uh, when's that gonna happen? Come, I'll tell you. Whoa! Whoa! Hello, kids, and welcome, welcome to Kids Church for all ages. 
starting this April 2021, the Small Kids and Big Kids Services videos will unite into one video! Wow! We'll still have our favorite games! Dancing and craft! See you all in April! See ya! Hello, kids! Hello! Hi! Welcome to... Kids Church. Church! Shout out to our friends! Yes, shout out to our friends! Hello. Caleb Nanud, Jayona Acorda, Alpha Bethina Dakina, Priya Hello. Herrera, Danny and Emmy Alipio! Hello! Hello, friends! I love shout outs! <laughs> yes, yeah, speaking of shout outs, let's play a game! Oh, what game? We will try to say some words while eating poveron, and you will try to guess what we're saying. Oh, poveron? Yes, poveron! Are you ready, kids? I think they're ready! Yes, let's go! Now I will be starting to put cover on in my mouth. Yep. And while she's doing that, you kids have to guess what teacher Berlin will be saying. Ready? First phrase, or rather sentence. No one, no one, first. Welcome to King's Church. Mm -hmm. Welcome to King's Church. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite food? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, okay, how about this? Read your Bible on prayer every day. Oh, what was that? This is a song. A song? Oh, guess it, kids? How about this one? I will meet you. Oh, I can you say it again? I will miss you. Me sure? Alright, how about this? No vocal. Normal calls. But that is? It's like the title of the series. No vocal. I think it is the title of our series. I'm sure most of you had a difficult time guessing what I was saying. Uh -huh. yeah. I looked a bit silly too, right? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Our story for today is about a boy oh. who was tasked to deliver something that was hard to say. Oh. Let's watch the video. And listen to the preaching of the word. Yay! <laughs> Hello, hello. Hi, kids. I guess this is the last phone call for the month. Have you ever tried to deliver a message from someone? I remember when I was young, my mother used to ask me to tell my big sister to stop playing video games because it was time for supper. Well, this is Samuel. Samuel was a young boy when he was called by the Lord to deliver a very important message. He was sleeping when he heard the Lord call out his name. Samuel thought it was his boss Eli who was calling, 
but Eli told him to go back to bed. This happened two more times until his boss realized that the Lord himself was calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel to go back to bed and when he hears the voice call out again, he should say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and true enough, the Lord called him. The Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord told Samuel that he had great plans for him. But first, he had to deliver a message to Eli. It was a very sad message because the Lord was going to remove the family of Eli from his ministry because of the sins that Eli's sons did. In the morning, Samuel bravely told his boss Eli that he was no longer going to be allowed to serve the Lord as a priest, and his sons would no longer be allowed to be priests either. Eli was heartbroken, but he understood that the Lord's ways were perfect. Samuel faithfully delivered the Lord's message to Eli, even if Eli was much older than him. As Samuel grew up, he continued delivering messages from the Lord to important people, and he became the greatest prophet who delivered messages to kings and to the people of Israel in the Old Testament. Samuel was a young boy when he allowed God to use him to deliver his messages. He was maybe as young as you. So, kids, are you willing to deliver God's messages to people today? Try it by calling a friend or a relative and share about God's love for them. You'll never know how much they need to hear about that today. And that's it for our main man, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, I had fun talking to you kids. Call you later. Hi everyone, we are concluding our series Double Call. So let me introduce myself as Pastor Bojo. Bojo, get it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, today is also Palm Sunday, so I hope you're looking forward to Holy Week, uh, not just to spend time with your family, but also to reflect and be reminded of uh, the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, before we get into today's Bible story, I want to say hello to McLaren Paz Clark from the U.S., as well as Liam Enrico Manuel from Legaspi City, who I believe invites his friends, uh, Tyke and Kelly, to watch kids church with him and please do feel free to uh, invite your friends your classmates you can send them the link and uh, invite them to watch kids church with you every sunday so today's uh, message today's bible story is about a young boy named samuel who's only a couple of years older than all of you guys watching this and so he served the lord in the tabernacle and the tabernacle is like a tent where the priests live and that's where they would have all the sacrifices done and the reason why Samuel was serving there at a, as a, at a young age was because his mom who could not give birth uh, uh, prayed to the Lord and when the Lord made her pregnant gave birth to a son and she said that this son is going to serve the Lord she dedicated her son to the Lord and so that's why Samuel is here in the tabernacle okay so now, during this time as well, when Samuel was still a very young boy, God did not speak to the people. He barely spoke. People barely heard his voice. Not like the time of Noah or Moses where God would just call Moses, Moses, or Gideon, Gideon, you know, where he would just call them out by name and start speaking to the people, do this, I command you to do that. People probably forgot about God's voice because God wasn't speaking at this time. And so one night, Samuel was going to sleep. He was actually asleep, fast asleep. He was just there on the floor. Uh, and all of a sudden, he hears his name being called Samuel, Samuel. All right. And so Samuel looks up. He, he, he kind of is a, not 100% awake. He gets up and there's nobody else there. So he goes to the only person he knows who's there. And that's Eli, the priest. And he goes up to Eli. Hey, Eli, hi, you called me, I'm here, what can I do for you? And Eli, of course, he's asleep as well, because 
Sam, what are you doing here? What? I, I did not call you. Go, go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. All right. So Samuel goes back to sleep. Okay, okay. I mean, he's sleeping. He's probably very sleepy. So goes back to sleep and he hears his name being called once again. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel gets up. Oh, who's that? And again, nobody's there. He can't see anyone. And the only person is there who's Eli. So he goes up to Eli. Eli, I believe you called me. I'm here. What do you want me to do? And Eli's like, uh, Samuel, Samuel, I, I did not call you. What are you doing here? And Eli, the priest, I mean, this guy, probably at a young age, maybe you heard a voice of God, just remembers all of a sudden, wait a second here. Samuel, you know what? Maybe that could be God's calling you. You know what? When you hear your name being called again, just say, here I am, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel says, huh? Okay, I'll just say that. And so Samuel just goes back to sleep. And uh, Samuel's asleep again. And then here's his name being called a third time. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel repeats the words that Eli the priest told him. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so God, again, he's the one who called him. And God, so God speaks to him. Wow, God speaks to this young boy. You know, God can speak to you as well. And so God was speaking to Samuel at this young age. And he's telling him this powerful message, a message that was actually hard to give because this message was about Eli and his family and how they were dishonoring God and disrespecting uh, the tabernacle and the practices and they were doing all of these things that were against the law of God. And so the next day, Samuel received the message and delivered the message just as God had told him. And so to make a long story short, Samuel grew up to be a man, a prophet, a priest, a man who would clearly hear the voice of God. And not only would he hear the voice of God, but he would also deliver the message. Whatever God was speaking to him, he would deliver to the people of Israel. And you know, as Christians, we too can hear the voice of God. Did you know that you can hear the voice of God? I want to encourage you to call upon you. Just like what Simon said, Lord, here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is, is, is listening. You know, just say that, Lord, here I am, for your son is linked. Here I am, Lord, for your daughter is listening. And just be sensitive and allow God to speak to you. And many times what God will speak to you, yes, it's for you to listen, to follow and obey. But sometimes what God would say to you is a message for someone else. Wow, you know, God can use you to speak his message, his message of love, his message of grace to somebody else. And so if God is speaking to tell somebody about His love or to tell somebody that, you know, what they're doing is wrong, but to tell them with grace and love and mercy, by all means, do it because it is God who is the one who's telling you, all right? So let us all be reminded that just as Sam was a young boy, God called him by name and God gave him a purpose. The same thing for all of us. God has given us a purpose as He continues to speak to us. Amen? That's why our power truth tells us that God calls us by name and gives us a purpose. Wow! And our power verse, I hope you're ready for a power verse dance because our power verse tells us in Isaiah 43 verse 1, Do not be afraid because I have saved you. I've called you by name and you are mine. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid
I hope you guys enjoy that power verse dance. You know, just as God called Samuel and used him to deliver a message to Eli and to continue to deliver uh, his message, his word to the people of Israel. You know, Jesus himself came here on earth. He didn't just perform miracles and teach and do all of these wondrous signs and wonders, but Jesus came here for a purpose. He came here to deliver a powerful message. And that powerful message is that there is forgiveness in Him. There is eternal life in Him. There is a right life in Him. And He showed us, or He, he did not just say that message, but He showed us that message when He died on the cross for you and I. And as we put our faith, and He invites us to put our faith in Him, to have a right relationship, to have a relationship with Him, so that we can receive His righteousness, so we can receive His forgiveness, so we can receive His love, His grace, His mercy, His, the blessings as well, all of that. And that is the powerful message that Christ has given us when God sent Him here on earth. Isn't that great news? Isn't that good news? Wow! You know, and, and the same thing for all of us. Let us continue to share this wonderful message, this wonderful good news of Christ to those around us as well. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much for uh, calling us by name, for giving us a purpose. Lord, we thank you that we can hear your voice, that you speak to us, Lord God. Lord, you long to speak to us. You long to tell us how much you love us, to, to share, Father God, your heart to each and every one of us. So Lord, I pray that everyone who's watching this right now, Lord, I pray that we would have sensitive ears to hear your voice, sensitive ears to listen what's in your heart, your heart that's not just for us, but your heart that is for everyone else around us as well. Lord, we pray that if you call us to speak words words of encouragement, words of life. Father, I pray that we would obey so that we could deliver your message of love, of grace, of mercy. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Hello kids and welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Thank you for sending in all your photos from our craft activity last week. I'm sure all of you had fun making your own burning bush. Remember, Moses had a lot of weaknesses, but God still called him to do great things for the Lord. Excellent work, kids! By the way, today is the last day to join our craft raffle for the month of March. If you've been submitting your craft since March week 1, then surprise! Each photo of you and your craft of the week that you submitted is going to be included in our raffle draw. If you weren't able to submit any for the past three weeks, then that's okay. You can send us your entry through our email address flashed on the screen this week. Now, let's get crafting! But first, shout out to Titus Sunga, Karis and Koy Atilano, and their friends who they invited to Kids Church, Kevin and A. Balagbagan! Hi, kids! So today we learned about the boy Samuel and how he was used to speak the words of God. He was God's mouthpiece. Our craft for today is something that we use that makes our voice louder. Can you guess what it is? 
It's a microphone! To make this craft, we will need a toilet paper cord, some aluminum foil, a small ball, or if you don't have a small ball, you can just bunch up scratch papers together until they form a ball. You can also use some tape or some glue, some scissors, stickers, I have here dinosaur stickers, and some colored paper. But for this craft, I am going to use black. Now, let's begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my small ball and cover it with aluminum foil. I suggest that when handling aluminum foil, you always ask help from your mom and dad because there are sharp objects in the box. So I'm just taking a sheet of aluminum foil and now I'm gonna cover this ball with the foil. Oops! Let's use the shiniest part of our foil. And I'll make sure that it's tightly covering the small ball that I have. When you're done, it should look like this. Next step is we are gonna attach this ball to our toilet paper core like this. So I'm going to use my scotch tape. I'm going to take a long strip of tape and just tape this ball over. So we're sure that even if we shake our microphone, the ball doesn't fall off. So I'll add a bit more. Doesn't it look like a microphone already? The next thing that I want to do is I want to cover the toilet paper core with black. To do this, I'm just going to measure out how much paper I need. So it's only up until about here. I'll fold it like this. And I'll use my scissors to cut. And now I'm going to wrap this around my microphone and I'll use some tape to secure it. <gasps> it looks so pretty! So I'll make sure that my wrapping is tight enough so it doesn't unravel. I'll take a long piece of tape to secure. Of course, if you have glue or double-sided tape, you can use those as well. I just use tape because tape is excellent in securing this ball on this toilet paper core. And now it looks like we have a microphone. But we're not done yet because our microphone is looking a little bit plain. And that's where we are gonna use our stickers. Stickers over here. So I love dinosaurs. That's why I'm gonna decorate my microphone with dinosaur stickers. And I think I'm gonna start on top. I'm gonna make a border of dinosaurs on top. Of course, if you have other decorating materials like paint or maybe glitter, glitter is gonna look excellent with the microphone, don't you think? Or maybe if you have crayons or metallic markers, those are gonna look excellent. So I now have dinosaurs all over my microphone and I'm gonna place a border of dinosaurs here at the bottom. Oh, look at this dinosaur, it's so cute. It's a little hatchling. And I'm now done with my microphone craft. Have you ever used a real microphone? It makes your voice louder so more people can hear you. Let this microphone craft remind us that we have been called by God to share His Word to everyone. Can you say everyone, kids? Great job! It doesn't mean that we need to talk in a louder voice though. It just means that we want as many people to hear what we have to say about God. And that's it for our craft. If you want your photo of you and your craft to be included in the next video, and if you want to join our craft raffle open to viewers around the globe, 
please send your photos to the email address flashed on the screen. So I'll be seeing you kids next week. Microphone craft. And um, now it's time for Tanya versus Tanya! A friendly song competition! The game is simple. We have three contestants. Contestant number one is Tanya. Oh. Yep, it's you. Contestant number two is me. Tanya. You. And contestant number three will be you! Yes, you! Are you ready? I have one question and you just have to shout out the answer if you know it. Mm -hmm. Yes! Question one! Question number one. What was the name of the boy in the story? Oh. Mm. Uh, it sounds like Ham? Mm. Uh, a bit? Sam! Uh, yes! Sam Rob. Yes! Japanese. One point for you. One point for me. Yes. Question number two. Two. Who managed the tabernacle in Shiloh? The person who was Samuel's boss. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. What's his what, name? What's it? Eli? Yes, you're correct again. Oh, it's Eli. Two points for me. Yes, two points for oh, you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, oh, that's okay. Question number three. Three. Oh, three. Why did God call Samuel? Oh. Hmm. oh no. Hmm. Oh, this one I know. Yes. Jeremy. Go, go, go ahead, Tanya. God called Samuel to deliver an important message to Eli. Wow, perfect. Oh, great job. job. Yes, great job. So we have two points for Tanya and one point for Tanya. Yeah. Last question. Last question. <laughs> Was that the only message from God that Samuel delivered in his lifetime? Oh. Hmm. What do you think? Uh, ah, yeah. No! Uh, because Samuel grew up to be a prophet who delivered the Lord's message to the nation of Israel! Yay, perfect! Oh. Great job, Daniel! Oh, yes! And the winner is... Congratulations to you kids! I'm sure you answered everything correctly. Good job! Good job! Good job! Now for our family con! Family con! The question is, what do you think God wants you to say about him? Who are you going to tell it to? Who? Who? We encourage you to talk about this with your parents and your siblings so that you can better understand our lesson. And that's it for our... It's your lesson for the week! <laughs> yes! Yay! Stay tuned for next week because we'll have a brand new series! Oh, brand new series.